Hey guys, welcome to exercise 10-4 and 10-5. I usually don't do this where I combine two exercises into one video, but in this particular case, it's so similar to what we did in exercise 10-2 that I'm gonna go ahead and show 10-4 and 10-5 together. Let's go ahead and get started. So one of the things that I wanted to demonstrate in this that all of the views or all of the model is linked. So whatever you see in an interior elevation view, we're gonna go ahead and select all of them. And we're gonna keep the same 36 inch width, but we're gonna go ahead and shrink the window to where the book has it. And we're gonna make it 36 inch by 24. And now we're gonna go ahead and change the sill height to four foot 11. And I feel like that looks way better than what we already had it as. And that way we have our windows pretty much clear the top. Now the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and we're gonna move our windows over about four inches to the left. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add a door to this wall here that leads to the outside. So we're gonna pick a door exterior. So let's go to architectural tab, build panel, door. And we're gonna be looking at an exterior door and let's go ahead and specify a half, a half flat. Go ahead and situate that door one foot six inches away from the wall. And we're gonna place that there. We're gonna remove reference, delete the dimension string. What it's saying is what happened in the floor plan. So if I go back to the floor plan view, we have a door that is bisecting here and that's actually causing a wall issue. So we're gonna simply have to slide this over. Instead of one foot six, we're gonna go ahead and make that two feet to see if we clear it. And we do, but as of now, let's go ahead and make that door open towards the wall. And we're gonna flip it to that side. So we open into the space as we come in through almost like a backyard situation. And if we go under our 3D model, all of it has been updated. And that technically concludes exercise 10-4. So for exercise 10-5, we're gonna be looking at design options. Design option is a feature that allows you to present more than one option for a specific situation. And we're gonna look at one of the two scenarios that we have in the book. And let's go ahead and switch to our first floor plan. And how you enter into design option is, as you can see, we have our view toolbar here. And right down here, we have our status bar. And in our status bar, we have a design option. And that's how you click on design option. And this is the menu that gets popped up. So far, we have been modeling in the main model. We have had no options created and we have not had a situation where option had to be created. Everything had been the same as what we have created in the book. So what you're gonna do is by clicking new here, you're adding an additional option and that's your option. So right now, option primary cannot be deleted. This is what we have, what we're looking at right now. And when I click new, this will create another option for another situation. This could be a window situation. This could be an entry situation, right? And the primary will stay next to these options because that's what the original model has. That's what the original model is gonna display. So in order for me to create a a option within the set of option, I'm gonna go ahead and click new here. That means, let's say this is an exterior wall condition or let's say this is a different window situation. Option one is what's primary, what you're gonna be able to see. Option two is what you're gonna switch to. So let's go ahead and start naming them. I'm going to simply select option set one, select it, and you're gonna rename that here because that's a category. That's just a category by itself. So we're gonna rename this to entry, press okay. Then this is option one for entry windows. This is option two. So let's go ahead and rename this. We're gonna rename this to, go ahead and press okay. And now that is your roof options, you're going to go ahead and select entry roof again, and you can select new options. This allows you to have an option one and option two. We're going to go ahead and hit close once we have those options created. Next, we're going to go ahead and switch to our 3D model. And let's go and turn around to a point where we can see the south elevation, which is right here. 
and we're going to go ahead and select these three walls, the front entry walls. Once you have all three walls selected, you're going to select this icon that says Add to Set, which is located right next to Design Option. Now this becomes an option for you because you have created it. You're going to select that, and you're going to have it in both in your Option 1 and Option 2. And you're going to go ahead and press OK. This allows it to have a copy inside the Option 2 under your entry windows. So this is how it's going to be located. You're going to go ahead and select the three double hung windows in the front. Let's go ahead and go to Edit Type. And we're going to go ahead and duplicate this window. We're going to name this window 16 inches by 72 inches. And this should be very familiar because this is how we changed our windows in the past. Go ahead and press OK. That's how you name the file. And this is where you're going to actually change the width and the height. So you're going to go ahead and type in 16 inches by 72 inches. And we're going to go ahead and press OK. Now that you have those windows changed, this is what option two looks like. Now, if I want to switch back to option one or primary option, and I select that, notice how we're able to show the client how your facade will look with different option. Selecting option one again, and this is option two. You can also switch back to the main model. And going back to option two, this is what it would look like. Your primary option stays the same. You can reassign your primary option once you go back under the main model. You can go under design options and you can select which one is going to be the primary by selecting option two and calling that to make it primary. Once you make that a primary, this is what's going to be displayed under main model. Next, we're going to go ahead and start option two for our roof without selecting any walls to go into our option two. So let's go ahead and start. And when you go into option two, now you have no reference. Back when we actually did option two for entry windows, we used walls as reference. While the main model is blocked out, we're gonna go ahead and go into our project browser. We're gonna scroll down to the elevation view and select our south elevation view. So this is gonna be our entry um, roof, cover, however you want to look at it. We're going to go ahead and zoom in where we can actually just see just the entry door and the top of the entry door. Next, you're going to go ahead and select Architectural tab. Under the Build panel, we're going to select Under Component. There's an arrow. You're going to select the arrow, then you're going to select Model in Place. And it's going to uh, pull up a tab that's going to look like this. You're going to scroll down to where it says Roof and you're going to go ahead and press OK. We're going to call this roof Entry Roof. Press OK again. Next, we're going to select Extrusion. And when you select Extrusion, it's going to ask you to pick a plane. And you can select the plane that you're already on, and you can just say OK. And you can just select the cursor and hover it over the main wall and just select that and that become the curve or that becomes the wall by which you're going to be drawing this curved roof. Next, we're going to go ahead and draw a start and radius arc. We're going to set the depth to two feet. We're going to make sure chain link is on and these are the options that we're looking at. Next, we're going to go ahead and start our start and radius. Your first click is going to be aligned with the actual edge of the window and right at where we have this small pop out of pop out right off the wall right this extrusion and then from here we're going to go ahead and align the next one to the edge of this wall that's going to be our second click roughly around there six foot four is good enough and i want you to go ahead and i'm going to eyeball this more or less to be a curvature that goes somewhere around here, around close to 90 degrees. I'm going to snap mine right around 89 degrees. 89.41. So that's going to be our first start and radius. 
Now the next thing you can do is you can simply go under the offset command and offset over seven and a quarter inches from the previous arc or you can draw a whole new arc. So let's go ahead and use the offset command. It would be good practice on our modifying command. So over here, let's offset 7.25 inches, seven and a quarter, and we can offset that up. Next, we're gonna go ahead and simply connect the lines so we can complete the shape under our option two. And we can hit the check mark. And when you do that, you can check finish model. You can check finish model and you'll have this completed. If I go under my 3D view, we should have this small arch that goes over and that's been modeled as option two. Lastly, I want to demonstrate how a shed roof can be created or a more traditional entry can be created. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. Book does not really give you an example on how to draw this, but we can attempt this on our own by simply escaping out of the option two and going under our main model. Go, going back to our status bar, go, selecting design option and under our entry roof, creating a new option altogether, option three, and we can call and we can rename these now because since there are more of them, we might as well rename them. So we'll call this one traditional roof, press okay. We can call this one modern curve and press okay. And now you have your design options being done here and we're gonna go ahead and hit close. So next, we're gonna go ahead and go under our option to creating a roof and we're gonna select traditional roof. So after selecting our traditional roof, we're gonna go ahead and go to our project browser, scroll up where it says first floor, and we're gonna open that tab. We're gonna go under the architectural tab, build panel, and we're gonna select roof and roof by footprint. Now we're gonna draw a roof just like we have drawn in the past, we're gonna make sure that the base level is starting at the second floor. And there's no base level offset. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that design, a defined slope is only going to be on for the south side. And overall, we're not gonna have defined slope open. So we're just gonna go ahead and go with the line tool. Draw around. The Once we've gone out, 10 feet in both directions, we're gonna go back to the line tool and we're gonna select define slope this time. And our define slope again, that option for what, what our slope is going to be, is specify when we draw across and the slope is gonna be 912, we can keep it that way. And you can press the check mark. We go under our 3D model, specify our base level back down to first floor. So there you have it. You have a roof that can be traditional, angled with the roof, or you can just simply go back to what your main model was showing, or you can go ahead and go to a modern curved roof. And again, you can switch out which one you wanna make primary, so it will display with your main model. So with that said, that pretty much sums up design option when it comes to any elevations or floor plans. That concludes exercise 10-4 and 10-5. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. Follow for more content.